Hello, my name is Mercia Shonek, and today I want to talk to you about my experience with grief and um, the comfort that the Lord brought. So a few years ago, my daughter in her ninth month of pregnancy lost a baby. And we had just been preparing for this little one to come home. I'll never forget, we had bought a lot of clothing for baby over the, the months expecting her arrival. And the day before my daughter went into hospital, we had washed all of the clothing and the blankets and the towels and um, whatever baby needed, the little booties, etc. And it was all hung out. And I'll never forget taking photos of those um, just to show her one day that, you know, you were this small and now you have grown. And so we were really, really excited for her arrival. Um, but we got a call from the doctor to say the doctor wanted to meet us. When we arrived at her office, she sat us down and she said, I have bad news for you, but um, the baby has died. And I said, it can't be, you know, because I had a dream. So my daughter had been in hospital for a few days and myself and my friends, people that I trusted, I asked them to please pray and we prayed. And I think it was a day before we got the news, I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw this little girl and she was happily playing, you know, and I had a picture of the Lord holding her hand. And then there was this train that passed by. And after the train passed by, I never saw her again. And this is all in the dream. And so to me, that was an indication that the Lord was saying, you know what, she's, she's going to be healthy. You're going to see her jumping up and down because she was you know, jumping and skipping in the dream. And that got me excited. And so now this doctor tells me, you know, baby's not around any longer and uh, we have to prepare. And what she'll do for us after they remove the baby, we can go and meet. I left the doctor's office and I went straight to my daughter at the ward and I said to my husband, and I said, we're going to believe that when baby's removed, she's going to be well and healthy. We're not going to quit. And we laid hands on the tummy and we believe the Lord that, you know, for supernatural healing and we will see her well. Unfortunately, when baby was removed, she was stillborn and um, they invited us to go and see, but I made the decision I didn't want to then see her. I think that day I was just dumbstruck by the news and what had happened. Um, I never shed a tear that day, but the next morning I woke up and I normally go and pray early hours of the morning and I was on my way down to my, the area where I sit and pray. And as I walked into that area, I heard my mom, my mom had passed away many years ago, my mom saying, oh, this is Mersha's grandchild. And that got me so excited, you know, that my mom knew that that was my grandchild and I knew that mom would take care of her, you know, now that she was in heaven. And I felt just a peace come over me. And I remember throughout that day, I just cried and cried and cried. You know, I let my family know what had happened. Oh, news just spread that, you know, my daughter had lost the baby. And so that was hard. And so, you know, I received calls from family members and friends. And throughout the day, I just cried. I sobbed and sobbed uncontrollably that we had lost her. And um, I think it was the day after I, you know, we had to start making preparations for a little funeral for her and just get the death, death certificates and all of those things. And I also had to go to the mall just to get some groceries or stuff. And it seemed that wherever I went in the mall, there was a granny, you know, with their, with their grandchildren or there was a pregnant mom, or there was moms holding their babies or walking with their children. And it just affected me so heavily. And I was, why, you know, 
this was our first grandchild and we wanted to see her and we wanted to hold her and we wanted to be with her. And so why is this happening? At the same time, a friend of mine, her daughter was also pregnant. So they were going to give birth at the same time. And there was news that her baby, you know, she had had a baby. And it seemed like my friend also just kept uh, it all silent. Normally, I would have been invited to the baby shower, but I wasn't. And I think she was just protecting me as well. And uh, so, you know, that also affected me. You know, why, Lord? And I remember just coming and praying. I said, Lord, I, I, I can't live like this. You know, wherever I go and there's a grandchild or there's a mom pregnant, it's going to affect me like this, you know. And I prayed. I said, Lord, when I don't understand, you understand. When I don't know, you know. And I'll never forget also the amount of flowers we got, you know, from companies and friends and family and wreaths and I just hated having them in my house because suddenly it just reminded me of death. And uh, I love flowers. You can see there's some flowers in the background and I always try to keep flowers in my home. But during that period, you know, just the reminder of death, having all this fl flowers in my home really affected me badly. And I want to say, you know, um, leave me a comment. Tell me how you... Um, experience grief and you know the death of a loved one what affected you and what didn't affect you so flowers I didn't want in my home and um, but I love flowers and so you know give please give me flowers if you want to but um, that is that is what happened to me so a lot of things we all grieve differently and it's okay the way we grieve but um it's important that we ask the Lord to help us so that we don't grieve uh, for long periods of time. And I said, Lord, I, I can't do this. I don't want to be envious of others that have had children and grandparents um, that, that have their babies around. But uh, God was good and he was merciful and he was gracious. And I think after a while, you know, I subsided and um, I'm able to, you know, embrace others and um, comfort others. The other thing that I hated to hear was she's in a better place. God needed an angel. Oh, my word. Every time somebody said that to me, it was like my heart sunk because we wanted her here. We wanted to see her. We wanted to hold her. We had prepared for her. And now she's no longer. Um, but the Lord even helped me with that. And I want to say to us, I think we, we can also go and, and embrace people or comfort people by not saying a word. But just letting them know, I'm here for you. If you need anything, call on me. You know, we don't have to say things to people. Just your presence with them. People were in and out here. I, I love that. And so I was so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the church that I'm at. So they also have an amazing grief counseling course. And just sitting with others that have grieved, you know, that have lost a loved one has really, really helped tremendously. So being in those groups was, was amazing, you know, just to hear people's different stories, their perspective. And how the Lord is also just helping them. So, so that was absolutely amazing. And so that is what I wanted to share with you. Is that we all grieve differently. But there's a God that comforts. And I promise you God came and he comforted me. I think after the first week I was absolutely fine. I had to trust that God sees the big picture. He knows all and we live in a fallen world and things happen and there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And so often we blame God, but we also live in a fallen world. And there's the enemy that comes to steal, kill and destroy. And, um, you know, we, we get to learn and we get to grow. But I don't believe that God's called us to grieve endlessly. And so I just want to encourage you with that today. And so I'm going to pray for those that have 
lost a loved one and you are struggling, ask Lord just to come in and help you. Lord, we just lift up to you those that have grieved, those that have lost a loved one, those that are struggling with the loss. I pray, Lord, that your peace will rule and reign in their hearts and in their lives. Lord, keep them in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on you because they trust you. You said, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but I've given you power, love, and a sound mind. And so often we feel so condemned because we could have said this, we could have done that, um, but that doesn't help. And so we need to forget the things which are behind and press on to the prize of the high calling. And Lord, your word says there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And so for those that have been grieving and mourning, Lord, I pray that you just give them a revelation of your love, a revelation of your grace, a revelation of your mercy. I pray, Father God, that you really show up strong in their lives. Father God, we thank you. And, and those of us, Lord, that encounters people that are grieving, give us wisdom with the things that we say and the things that we do and help us, Lord just to honor you. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that I know that when I don't know, you know. And when I don't understand, you understand, Lord. And I thank you that you will strengthen us to keep living life to the full and remind us that these people that have gone ahead of us, that are now with you, that they are in our future and we get to meet them again. We love you, Lord, and we just thank you. And I pray that this has spoken to your heart, it has touched your heart, and it, it will help you uh, to, to trust the Lord in this season. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. And you know what? I'd love it if you would leave me a comment about how you experience grief and, you know, what are the things you dislike during that time? And uh, it, it will help us, you know, to, to respond better to the people that have lost loved ones. And so, Lord, just bless them, empower them, and energize them. And if you've been encouraged by this message today, won't you like, subscribe, and leave me a comment? I love reading the comments. And if you need me to pray for you, leave your prayer request, and I will certainly pray for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.